Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Eden Zero, Chapter 175. When we last left our heroes, Shiki and the gang made their great escape from shooting Starlight, uh, as it was surrounded by Feather's army, uh, and the gang kind of just made quick work of, of Team Feather, uh, even with the, with her army gifted her ether gear, uh, Eye of God, as even if they could see where Shiki and the gang were would be before the uh, Shiki and the gang knew, that didn't actually help them stop them. Uh, as the crew of Edens was just too powerful for them, uh, to the point where Shiki like almost I don't think he means it as a taunt, but it does kind of come across as a taunt, asking Feather, "Would you mind getting out of our way?" and then like pinning her to the ground with uh, with his gravity. Uh, so the gang pretty much makes quick work. But uh, they're still surrounded by Feather's fleet. Uh, and meanwhile, Connor is just just so overwhelmed at how strong they are. And at Noah telling, them that, that, telling him that the entire crew are orphans. Uh, that he decides to basically become Team Dad. Uh, and tell the crew that he will help them get out of uh, the situation they're in. So let's dive right on into Chapter 175, The Man, the Captain. And our picture here is of Hermit in a room with giant plush dolls, including this giant blue. It's real cute. And I will say, given how horny the past couple of chapter covers have been, I do, you know, I have my, my gripes with Mashima and his horniness from time to time. But I do like how, at least in the case of Hermit, younger bodied characters, but also younger characters in general, like Wendy over in Fairy Tale, really just never get the lewd treatment. Um, like... It's kind of embarrassing that that's an impressive feat, but that's where we are right now, so props to you, Mashima. Uh, anyway, we open uh, with the Eden Zero as Hermit's reporting status report. As you can see, Feather's fleet has surrounded the space around the entire planet. Uh, and Sister, Sister chimes in, it's only 30 ships, but they're the fastest in the Union Army. They're going to be trouble. Um, and Connor just looks it up, lo looks up at it. Hmm. I wouldn't be calling that surrounded. More little blockade, that be. Connor is just so cocky here. Um, but Wise just sort of turns on Connor. Sorry to interrupt your self-important analysis, but we're only in this mess because someone needed to get away. Uh, and Jean also, uh, Jean and Laguna also kind of pile on, we wouldn't be at Blue Garden or use up our fast travel. And Laguna chimes in, if someone hadn't been a selfish little baby, that's, that's quite a... T There's something about that selfish little baby line that just just spe just comes up as kind of weird to me. I don't know. Um, mm. Anyway, Laguna... Um, uh, not Laguna. Connor just sort of murk at that. Uh, but Shiki tells them, that's all the past, guys. And Wise just snaps, no, it isn't. Uh, and Homer tells them, we are the must-capture popular ship now. Um, and for some reason that shocks Shiki and Connor, that they almost certainly kind of knew that they were, knew that fact. Um, anyway, Wise continues, I don't trust that guy. And if Witch were around, I doubt she'd, ha I doubt she'd hand over the ship's controls that easily. Uh, and then this is Rebecca, I think, who, who tells them, I think flashing back to Sun Jewel, it's okay, we can trust him. Shocking everyone, Wise in particular, who reacts, but you trusted him least of all. Um, and Rebecca clarifies, I don't trust his connection to Ziggy, but I trust his piloting skills. Which does track, you know, everything she knows should be alerting her. He has some connection to Ziggy, maybe more than he's letting on, but also he's, a, he's an incredible pilot. Um, anyway, Rebe uh, Happy chimes in, if Rebecca says so, then we know it's okay. Uh, and Pino chimes in, who, of course, has a particular relationship with Connor. I trust him, too. Uh, and then Connor sort of takes that on. Then I'll be handling this, if you don't mind. Because I certainly never wanted to become the sort of adult what would, what would betray the trust of the younger folk. Uh, which, again, ties in with what we saw of him last chapter. How the fact that they're orphans is what touches him so much. Uh, and Shiki smiles at him. Thanks. Uh, but why is, why is he still not on board with this? Wait a minute. This guy just ran away from Lendard. And that's exactly where we're headed. What changed your mind? Um, 
And Connor just can't even, like, lift his head. Would it sound too idealistic to say that when I saw the, when I saw the lot of you fighting, it captured me old heart? And then we had this kind of contradictory panel here. Because there are two things going on in this panel that I noticed as soon as I turned the page. Uh, Connor's thought continues, I, but it be the truth. Implying that what he's saying is true. Right? That he changed when he saw the, the group fighting. But he also has this grin that seems kind of treacherous. Like, like he's lying to them. Uh, I don't know. Well, again, Connor's motivations are so wrapped up in, in multiverse theory and all kinds of random shit. Uh, that I just don't really know where we're going to end up going with him. Anyway, Eden Zero, blast off. Let us begin the mission to escape the Union Army's clutches. And they, you know, shoot out of the, the hangar into open space. Uh, and Connor's, like, sitting in the captain's chair. Okay, and which, like, our sister, like, taunting him. Okay, Mr. Captain, what now? We can't use fast travel yet. And we'll never break through unless we sink a few of their ships. Uh, but Connor stops sister against your leader's wish wishes, that be. And Shiki agrees. I don't want to fire at anyone who's not our enemy. Don't you fret, lad. I be of the same mind. Which, you know, if he is truly on their side and not pro-Ziggy... Like, if you're pro-Ziggy, I could see him still wanting to, like, get rid of the army while he's at it. But if he is truly on their side, that, you know, the, his actions do line up here. Um, anyway, Feathers Armada, Fleet Destroyers, Racer-class ships. And we see a man here who is very clearly meant to be Racer from Fairy Tale. Uh, I don't know what his actual name is, uh, but his, his soldiers tell him the Eden Zero is approaching a, at a speed of 50 ether knots. They will soon be within firing range. Uh, and Racer tells them, commence warning fire. And the ships all shoot at the Eden Zero. Connor turns to Hermit. Does this ship have any shields? Uh, and Hermit presses some buttons, activating protect matrix. And the shields come on, uh, deflecting all the fire. Uh, and Connor is just like tapping away. Hmm. Magnificent. And Herbert turns and snaps at him. Hey, nobody gave you permission to look at the source code. Mm. Um, and Connor defends himself. Unnecessary measure in becoming one with the ship, lass. Now watch this. And he pulls down a lever or something, and the, the thrusters, like, flare up, um, getting faster and faster. The soldiers tell uh, Racer, Eden Zero approaching. They're gaining speed. Uh, and we see he's shocked. Are they going to ram us? Deploy shields! But instead, uh, the Eden Zero flies straight through uh, the fleet. Razor turns back in shock. She is just sort of stunned at how fast they're going. We just flew through Feather's siege? Uh, and Rebecca asks, what the? How do we go so fast? Uh, and clean also, for one second, the ship's speed suddenly spiked. And Hermit turns back to Connor. Connor! What did you do? Uh, and Connor just grins. A similar grin to what we saw a few pages ago when I was questioning his motives. Um, I took all eight of the ship's ether turbines to full throttle. That be all. Oh, but this be a fine ship. Uh, and Sister snaps. All eight turbines at full throttle? That's impossible. Uh, and Sister also, or Herman also agrees. It can't be controlled at that speed. But controlling it, I be. Uh, and the ship, uh, Feather's ships all turn around. Feather Armada, about face. Don't think you can get away from us. And Connor makes some more taps on his on the keyboard. Now then, this be where the real flight begins. Uh, and, or, uh, flight begins. I thought he said fight for a second there, but I'm also really tired today for some reason. And I'm kind of out of, I'm kind of out of it all day. Um, but anyway, my personal life aside, a uh, bunch of, of, you know, attacks flying towards Connor. Um, and Pino reports, Feathers Armada is flying, is flying at an incredible speed. And Happy also picks up. They'll be on our tail in no time. And we see Sister glaring. Damn it. They're faster than I thought. And with eight ether turbines at full throttle, we're theoretically the fastest we can go. Uh, and Feathers, Feathers Army is catching up. Uh, Hermit panics. They'll catch us. But Connor tells her, nay, lass. This ship can go faster. Disconnect the horizontal stabilizers. We won't be needing orthocenters either. I'm not sure what an orthocenter is, but okay. 
Temporarily integrate all supply channels from the ether drive. Multiply operation results. Connect to boosters. Uh, so he's just, you know, putting everything in the, in the ship's um, thrusters, I guess. Uh, Hermit snaps back. No, you can't do that at all. But Connor just ignores her. Compile. And he clicks a button and the ship gains speed. Uh, but everyone is knocked around the ship. Um, you know, like rolling over each other. Uh, Wise like catches himself. You turn off the ship's hor- horizontality mechanism. That's that sure is a word, I guess. Uh, and Homer, uh, I am tumbling. And then we see Couchpo and Moscow, <laughs> who I guess they had like some water or something that just like smacks them in the face. Sure, hope that wasn't boiling water or anything. Uh, it looks like soup, I think. Uh, but Shiki, who has gravity powers, uh, is just chilling. Uh, floating in the air. Rebecca's, like, holding on to him for dear life and Clean's holding on to her. Awesome. I had no idea we can go this fast. Uh, and back with, back with the racer fleet, uh, we hear the report. That's impossible. Our reports never said they could reach those speeds. But we're still faster. And so they're still gaining on them. Uh, and Sister reports, that's the Union Army's fastest fleet for you. They're still gaining. Uh, but Connor just tells her, Nay, lass, it don't matter how fast they be. They'll never catch up to us. Mm. Uh, and Sister steps back, What? How do you figure? And Connor just tells her, all matter of fact, I be taking the helm. And he goes right towards an asteroid field, uh, which is kind of a callback to his first appearance way back in, in Sun Jewel. Um, the IUA guys kind of react to, hey, you're kidding, right? They won it. They won it. And the gang goes straight towards that asteroid field. They won it. They're actually flying through a debris field at that speed? Yeah, they're just going to do it. That's suicide. What What do we do? Well, we can't follow them. Uh, and Racer tells them, just grazing one of those asteroids at that speed would cause serious damage. Uh, but... The Eden Zero is just neftly, or deftly nimbling through um, through all of those bits of debris. The gang is getting sent flying. Sister, at this point, is, almost, is genuinely impressed, I think. Are you for real? Uh, and Connor laughs. <laughs> they won't be following us now. And Hermit snaps at him. you got to be kidding me. Do you have any idea how dangerous this is? Uh, and then she gets a little beep on her computer screen. Um, and we see one ship is following them. Uh, and it, it seems to be Feather's, like, personal starfighter. Uh, we see, like, the angel wings behind it. It's a, it's a cool thing she's got going on. Uh, but she is, you know, not letting them go. Wise reacts, it's Feather! Uh, and Rebecca, she's following us through the debris fields at this speed? Uh, and yeah, she's very quickly gaining on them. Though we can just see from that shot, that top left panel on 17... That, like, that Starfighter is so tiny compared to the Eden Zero. I mean, it's, it's the ship of an Interstellar, so I assume it can do something. But I'm not sure what it's going to do against a huge flagship like the Eden Zero. Um, but anyway, uh, Homer reacts, she is fast. Uh, and, and we see Feather, like, focusing as she, as she comes in. Uh, Connor, like, watching her. And he reports, Fire! Which, of course, is the exact thing he told Shiki he wouldn't do. No! Don't shoot! And Connor stops him. Nay, lad. I meant the asteroids. And Shiki's kind of stopped as they just start shooting at the asteroids. I guess to, like, put up a good barrier between them and, and Feather. And Feather tells the group, Are you trying to hide from me? Well, it won't work. My eye of Venus tells me exactly where you are. Okay, there's an interesting thing. Because Noah's always called his power Eye of God. Um, but she calls her eye, hers Eye of Venus. Which, I mean... Going back to Roman myth, Venus is a god, so it's still kind of tracked. But I'm curious if the difference in name means that there is a slight difference in power. Or in, in what the exact ability is. Uh, like maybe, Or maybe it's just like Venus being, a, being you know... Uh, the goddess of so sort of a, a very, um, how do I, I'm trying to find the right way to phrase this, a very like feminine god for lack. Like she's a goddess, and like the goddess of, of beauty and love and all that. 
And like the Venus symbol is like the symbol for a female, right? The, the, you know, bum, bum, bum kind of thing. I hope that made sense. Um, like that is a, a, the Venus symbol, I think is what it's, what it's technically called, or Venusian or something. So maybe it's, maybe it's as simple as Venus is a woman, so hers is named after Venus, or Feather is a woman, so hers is named after Venus. Um, I don't know. Maybe it means, again, maybe it means nothing. Maybe it means some difference in powers. I just don't know. I'm kind of spitballing here. Um, but either way, um, okay, so are you trying to hide from me? Well, it won't work. My eye of Venus tells me exactly where you are. Oh, I think she she initially assumed it was just like a dust cloud uh, to like hide momentarily. But instead, you know, the debris is now like right in front of her. She barely dodges uh, one of the debris, one, one like tiny chunk of debris. Uh, and she reacts, no, they were trying to obstruct my path. And with that, their mission, uh, the Eden Zero's mission is a success, as Pino reports. Fast travel is fully charged. Off we go to the Kaide Cosmos. And um, with that, they are firmly in fast travel. Uh, and Rebecca's impressed. You know, this is not the first time she's seen Connor, but her, her opinions of him are kind of confirmed here. He's completely reckless. But Mr. Connor really is amazing. Uh, and Wise corrects her, no, no, no. We wouldn't even be in this mess if it weren't for that dude. And Jean adds on, and now there was no point in going to Blue Garden at all. Uh, and Connor is like, yeah, they're right, fuck. <laughs> uh, but Shiki just grins, no, there was a point. We found a captain for our ship. Okay. Um, so, I, I just flipped to the next page. It's more with Feather, uh, so I'll get to that in a second. But let's talk about that line. Um, because I think... I, I perhaps tie Eden Zero to One Piece a little too much. But I think the way Shiki is viewing the word captain here is closer to, to the way One Piece described, like, helmsman. You know? Um, especially for, for anime and manga fans who are, like, used to, pipe, to ship, ship terminology through the lens of One Piece. I read captain as, like, leader in the way that a One Piece captain is the leader of his crew. But I don't think Shiki is saying, actually, Connor's our boss now. He's saying, Connor's the pilot. Connor's the helmsman of this crew. Um, and I'd be curious about uh, the Japanese word choice there, but I'm in no way an expert in Japanese in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so I can't quite say for sure. But I'm not, if anyone's going to come out here and say Shiki's, like, giving control of the crew to Connor, I'm just going to say they're wrong. Uh, that's not really what's going on here. But anyway, back with uh, Feather. Uh, someone tells Feather, my, my, they slipped right through your fingers, didn't they? And it looks to be holy, from what we can see on the little view screen. Time to trade places, little Feather. Uh, and Feather asks, what? And we see from Feather's perspective, um, she's like in a, in, a, in a hot tub. Dear Shiki and his friends are headed to Lendar in the Kaide Cosmos. Uh, and Feather asks, where did you get that information? Now it's my turn. I would launch an immaculate military operation. Aracion says in Terrastellar, holy. And there's your fan service right there. Uh, what we did not get with, with Hermit, thankfully. Uh, we instead get with holy. Um, but anyway, there is one thing I'm kind of wondering. And it's the thing I'm kind of wondering this whole trip to Blue Garden. Is like, shouldn't Feather know where they are at all times? Like, if they go to Lendard, why can she not just, like... Like, I'm assuming fast travel works basically like hyperspace in Star Wars. Not counting Last Jedi and the whole hyperspace tracking plotline. Because um, that sort of doesn't quite mesh with this metaphor. But pre-Last Jedi hyperspace, where you go into hyperspace and no one can really track you. Um, you know, that, that's the whole point of getting to fast travel. Because now that fast travel is charged up again, they can't just be followed. Except with Feather's powers, they should be able to be followed. That's her whole thing, is knowing where people are. It's, it's the same power she shares with Noah. So I'm kind of curious why... If, so it's possible that, that Feather's line there is, where did you get that information? Because I thought I was the only one who knew that. Um, or maybe, like, my initial reading was that Feather just didn't know where they were going. Um... It, and maybe, maybe she doesn't know yet because they're not there yet, possibly. I'm not sure. The way Eye of God works and the way Fast Travel works hasn't really been gone into in detail, so I can't really say for sure uh, the mechanics of, of space flight in this universe. 
Uh, but anyway, it does tease Holy finally taking an active role in the story. She's largely just sort of been in the background to like tease Justice a little bit for definitely not having a, a love-hate relationship with Elsie. Uh, and I'm curious what she's going to do uh, once she puts her clothes on. I'll clarify that much. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about the chapter itself. Because it's a lot of fun. There's some good shit here. Um, you know, I like... I love going back to the very beginning. Rebecca's distinct speci- specifications as to the way she trusts uh, Connor. You know, she still suspects there's something off about him. You know, he's, he's caught up with Ziggy. He's allied to Ziggy in too many... He was allied to Ziggy in the last universe. She doesn't know that he was allied to Ziggy in universe one, but, like, he was... He's not exactly a trustworthy figure, but he's one hell of a pilot, and she witnessed that firsthand back at Sun Jewel. Um, so it makes sense that given the circumstances, you know, trust Connor at least for now. Uh, you know, if, if this is all a trap to get them to Lendard, they're going to Lendard anyway, so it's not like even if Connor were working for Ziggy, their, their goals are basically in alignment right now. Um, uh, but also, you know, he's sort of their only hope to not get arrested, which is really not what they want right now. Uh, and then the chase is just fun. You know, uh, Connor pulling out all the stops, going faster and faster than anyone ever thought the ship could go, uh, pulling out all these, like, strategies to, to get rid of the Feather crew, you know, to going into the asteroid field where the Feather gang can't really follow them or else they might die because they're not as good as Connor. Uh, so like distracting Feather just long enough to finish it, to finishing up the, the fast travel, um, the fast travel, um, charging, allowing them to just blast off into Kaide Cosmos. Uh, it's just, it's just fun. It's just simple, exciting fun. The sort of thing that I really hope that the anime comes back just so we can see this animated. It's going to be One of those chapters is just an utter blast to watch, I think. Um, So yeah, yeah, it's a real fun chapter this week. Uh, And now Connor is at least, for now, a permanent member of the crew. Uh, Again, he might end up betraying everyone and therefore lose his his crew member privileges. But Shiki does him captain. Again, I really do think Helmsman is a better title. Or maybe like Shiki is the Demon King. And so a captain is still like below him or something. Shiki is not relinquishing control of the ship. That's not what he's doing. It's clearly not what he's doing. Um, but yeah, fun stuff here. And now we really are back to Lendard um, to continue on the, the hunt for Ziggy. And also now with Holy in the mix, I thought the three-way conflict at Lendard would be, you know, the robot army, the crew of Edens, and Feather's armada. It's looking like it might be Holy instead. As she announces her plan to launch an immaculate military operation which does fit her word, her uh, terminology, or her name is Holy, I guess. Um, I don't know. Once we get more information on Holy, I think we're going to have some thoughts on her. Um, Because she is much more religiously themed than other characters. You know, it's not full-on Fire Force in his religious religious, uh, imagery. But, you know, Holy, of course, is a religious term. Immaculate comes from, like, Immaculate Conception or the, the Conception of Mary. Um, like, I would not be shocked to learn her real name is Mary, at least as, like, an in-joke. Not in the sort of way that, like, Mari Kusakabe's name being Mary has so much relevance. Uh, but I can see her name being Mary as a joke. Um, I don't know. All in all, there's a lot of fun to be had here. And once again, I just can't wait to see how all this plays out going forward. So I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe. You know, do whatever makes you happy, you know. And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye!